KHOU meteorologist Kim Castro here. We are talking about hurricane season and La Nina. You have probably heard us talk about La Nina for weeks on end. However, we will continue to be talking about this because it's expected to continue into fall. So what is La Nina and what kind of impacts could it have locally? First, let's talk about how it forms. We always have trade winds that blow from east to west. They blow this warmer ocean water off the coast of South America towards Asia. That's during a normal year and it creates some upwelling of some cooler water off the coast of South America. However, during a La Nina year, these trade winds are aggravated. They push more and more of that warm ocean water out west, and we see more of this cooler upwelling for the Pacific Ocean. Now, what this does at the surface also has impacts on what's happening aloft in our upper levels, our airstream. So this creates a trough for the Pacific, which means we'll see more wind activity, especially in the vertical. So we'll see changing wind speed and changing wind direction as we go through the levels of our atmosphere. And of course, tropical storms and hurricanes do not like this because it shears them apart, it pulls them apart. So we typically see less storms in a trough, but whatever happens upstream has consequences on what happens downstream too. So for the Caribbean, for the Atlantic, we see a ridge form and this develops less wind shear, so we have more calm conditions which storms like and that's why we typically tend to see more development under this La Nina system. Of course we talked about the ocean temperatures because we see cooler conditions off the coast of South America we see the opposite happen here in the Gulf in the Atlantic Basin we see warmer than normal conditions and that's exactly what we're experiencing this season two three four degrees warmer than normal tropical storms tropical systems hurricanes love this warm water that is the energy they need to grow stronger. So we have these two ingredients, the low wind shear and the warm sea surface temperatures in a La Nina year, which is why we have a heightened risk for activity. I want to show you the comparison between El Nino, which would be the opposite. We would have colder ocean water. We would have increased wind speeds at the vertical, so more wind shear, and that would lead to lesser storms. That's what we tend to see. This is a track of hurricanes since 1980. So for the last 40 plus years, this is the trajectory we tend to see with El Nino years. Now in a neutral phase, so neither El Nino or neither La Nina, we tend to see an uptick in uh, storm activity for the Gulf Coast. Now in a La Nina year, we see the most activity and this is to be expected. We see the number of hurricanes increase because they just have very favorable conditions. They have warm sea surface temperatures and they're uninterrupted by that wind shear. You may be asking yourself, well, we haven't seen too much activity yet and you're absolutely correct. We have just checked off three names off the 2022 Atlanta hurricane season, Alex, Bonnie and Colin. However, I will mention we are still very, very early on in this season. It's not typical to not expect any development for this time frame, and we aren't expecting any more uh, activity over the next two to five days, but it is only August 3rd. Peak hurricane season does roll in by September 10th, which is why we've got to keep a close eye on what is happening in the Atlantic because under La Nina conditions, if something does spark up, it could definitely kick off quite quickly. So be sure you are following us on social media. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I can answer any questions on the La Nina, and you can keep up to date on any activity expected over the next few days.